What's up everybody? I'm Chad. And I'm Ryan. And we're coming at you with our third installment of Wednesday Warriors, where we go to our local comic book store and we pick up whatever we seem to catch our eye. Exactly. So yeah, this series, this is the third episode. Um, just so you guys know right off the bat, uh, if you're looking at the time of this episode, it's probably going to be a lot shorter. Mm -hmm. Um... Not that it wasn't a great week for comics, because I actually think it was relatively average to good. Um, there wasn't a lot of indie books that we were going to check out, or indie books we were continuing with, like Proctor Valley Road, uh, Berserker, Noctera. You know, the what, second issue hasn't come out yet. Um, and there wasn't really a lot from the big two. Uh, a lot of Marvel books, but nothing really... A lot of ongoing Marvel books that we didn't really, we didn't really catch our eye. And um, DC... Uh, I've been talking about it for ages, but, um, you know, Nightwing, which was probably the biggest book of the week, um, you know, w we went to our comic, bu comic book shop pretty early, and it was already sold out, so we didn't even get a yeah. chance, um, but actually, to make it up, um, to make it up to you guys, I haven't even run this by Chad yet, um, but I think, uh, I just, um, we'll talk about it more later, but I, through some means, I just ordered the issue, um, and we will do a full issue breakdown on the first issue of Tom Taylor's Night We Run. Because it's proven that it's popular. It's the mm -hmm. highest rated comic book of the month. And it's probably sold out about instantly. But we have to get it first. Exactly. It has sold out. So once we get... Um, this video probably would have consisted of the two books we got and Nightwing. But unfortunately, we did not get Nightwing. Um, and also why this book... Or why this video is a little shorter is um, issue three of Iron Fist Heart of the Dragon dropped today. And if you guys know, we've really been enjoying the series. We're gonna, in this video, we're briefly, a minute, you know, a minute, we're gonna talk about it for about a minute, mm -hmm. um, but we will be releasing a video tomorrow, actually, um, around I, uh, issue three of Iron Fist Heart of the Dragon. Continuing uh, with our series review of that. Exactly. We, we've we been breaking down every single issue, uh, issue one, two, and three, uh, because we really like the series and, you know, we sell them get an Iron Fist book, so uh, there's not going to be a lot, but the main focus, we're going to have two main focuses of this vi uh, video. Um, probably the big second biggest book behind Tom Taylor's Nightwing was Justice League number 59 by Brian Michael Bendis and As David you see, Marquez. We got two different covers. Ryan got yeah. the full spread, open it up. Yeah, so uh, I was really, you know, the, you have all the Snyder Cut um, variant covers, yes. and I don't want to, I, again, I don't want to feed into the DC machine of variant covers. I'm only going to get a variant cover if I really, really like it. Um, so I wasn't going to get a Snyder League Justice League cover. Also, I don't think any of them look particularly that great. No, they, they really did not. Um, but but I really, I will give, you know, I'm pretty harsh. You know, I, I, it's a, I'm it's harsh out of love because I love DC and it's, you know, it's my favorite. Uh, but, you know, I like to criticize them so they do better. But with um, Superman and Batman and all these Infinite Frontier titles, the big ones at least, they've had uh, the main A cover, which is just, you know, the the main cover like what you would see for every issue but they also do these really cool wraparound covers mm -hmm. for every single issue um for no additional cost so yeah this was uh 4.99 and uh chad's was also 4.99 but yeah uh we'll talk about this more while we break down the issue but the art is the guy who does the interiors on this book did the wraparound cover david marquez and as you guys can see it is absolutely stunning um you know, I'd seen this, I'd actually seen this photo on Instagram, uh, you know, before Infinite Frontier was released, and it looks great. You know, you have Bendis' Justice League, we have the Titans, uh, you know, it's always great to see my boy Wally West up there. Uh, we have some more Suicide Squad and, like, uh, Teen Titans Young Justice members. We have Crush and Lobo, Jon Stewart, um, and Shazam on now, there. Now, of course, all those members were not no, in the yes. issue itself. No, yes. it... it, it they, they do it very tactically, what I will say. The back cover is just the wider DC universe. You have the Flashes, the Titans, the Green Lanterns. But then, you know, on this side of the wraparound, that is uh, Bendis' Justice League. Now, um, so, yeah. I think first, before we talk about Bendis' Justice League, very quickly, let's just give our minute analysis of Iron Fist, Heart of the Dragon. Okay. Um. So, guys, we're going to talk about this, like, so brief, like, 
when, when we say briefly, it usually means about 10 minutes. This is genuinely going to be like one sentence each because we are going to be spending about 30 minutes breaking this book down in an entirely separate video that will be out tomorrow. Um, but what you guys should do, if you want to learn more about this series, which you absolutely should because, uh, spoiler alert, we recommend it every single time, um, go back on the channel and Today, or tonight, after you watch this video, watch Iron Fist, Heart of the Dragon number one and number two, and then, hey, tomorrow you get the upload and you get to, you know, witness the third issue. Uh, my, you know, I, 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 I won't get into it too much. I would say um, a great continuation of the series. Um, so that's all I would say. I'd have to double down on that. You know, this, this series, I look forward to it along uh, with yeah. Daredevil, which is my number one. I look forward to this almost just as much at this point, and I'm, mm. I I love this cover. You see the oh, dragon here, Okoye up here coming down with a spear. Uh, it's just a a very good book. And uh, Larry Hama, he keeps up the momentum, he keeps oh, the so pace good. really well, and I'm loving it. But we'll talk about that more yeah. in a full video. You guys will see that tomorrow. Now for our right. other book, we only got two. We got Iron Fist and we got Justice League. So Ryan, okay, so um. This issue was four ninety nine, and actually, I appreciate DC again. You know, uh, I think DC has a lot, of, a lot to be criticized for. But for four ninety nine, they give us, uh, you know, a, a short but not too short Justice League story, and then a pretty decent size. Justice I, yeah, a decent Justice League Dark is the back issue. Yeah, so um, you know, you're basically getting, I would say, each issue for two, you know, two ninety nine, mm -hmm. um, which is which is pretty good as far as comics are concerned. Um, so yeah, first. I'll break down the uh, the Bendis Justice League issue, and Chad will break down, um, because, you know, he, he really loves Ram V and the Justice League Dark, so he'll break down that. So basically, um, this, I when I started reading this, I immediately was like, okay, a writer has a vision that they're going to take across multiple titles. So let me give an example. Scott Snyder, he started something in his Batman that he mm -hmm. took into Metal, and the concepts from Metal weaved right into his Justice League run, mm -hmm. which we weaved into Death Metal. All different titles, but he has a singular vision across. This is very much coming off the back of Bendis' controversial Superman run. Um, he says something on the first page. You know, Bendis is not pulling any punches. He says, um, I think that's why I like Clark revealing himself as Superman. People like him more now. And that's, that's Green Arrow who quotes that. Exactly. And it, if you guys don't know, uh, during Bendis' run, Clark Kent came out as, uh, you know, he is Superman. And, um, Revealed his identity to the world. And, and a lot of people did not like that. And I did not like that. Yeah, and Bendis is just doubling down. Saying, um, hey, that was a good thing. Yeah, people like it more, you know? It, yeah, it's a good just... decision. It's, guys, guys! It's... Um, but we were talking, and uh, I'll be honest, I would say Chad... I, I, Chad has read more classic Bendis than me, but I have read more current Bendis. Um... So we have two very different perspectives. It's starting to become the same the more and more we read of him. As 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 he reads more old Bendis, yeah. as I read more new Bendis. We're looking at each other's perspectives. Um, because I always loved Bendis' early work, the early, his early Daredevil, oh, so that was a phenomenal run on Daredevil. His Ultimate Spider-Man run, phenomenal. His New Avengers run, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. He's had some great things. And Ryan has read his... Is, is second decade yeah. work and that's very it's like t almost two different writers it just doesn't feel like the same guy the, the essence is this what i'll say about bendis is alt in, in a really weird way this ultimate spider-man and this feel very similar it's just the execution which is bendis you know bendis has always been a writer that you know, he could write Ultimate Spider-Man. He could write Daredevil um, because he understood what people actually talk. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it wasn't just, you know, people in a room thinking they could talk like the youth or talk like these characters. Bendis actually found a voice for each of these characters and wrote them really well. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you he would have, in Daredevil and Ultimate Spider-Man, he has these full-page yeah. runs of just dialogue boxes on top of each other, of two characters having a conversation and, and they really it's work. Strong, it really works. But but now he's lost he his lost edge. That touch. He lost and and you know Bendis when he's writing really well, those long stretches of texts really work. Like it it sounds 
normal, like a conversation people would be having. But now that he can't write as well as he did, it gets a bit obnoxious. Yeah. And Bendis, the thing Bendis was best known for, like his ability to write like a human. Mm -hmm. uh, like genuinely, while Chad and I were reading this, I said this. It sounds like the characters are robots. Um, Batman, and you know, Batman, you know, he's grim, dark, Avenger of the Night. But just think, he says, identify yourself. What brings you here? I read that and I go, is this Martian Manhunter? Yeah, like, I was, yeah. like, he doesn't, and none of the characters. Um, but as, as a little example of that dialogue, yeah, go going, ahead. like, taking up a whole page, the first page is a conversation between Green Arrow and Black Canary. And it takes up the whole page, and it, it was... It just doesn't feel like that real, like, two people having conversation. Like, they he, he tries to tie this in later on where they uh, come out of an elevator and they're, ha and they're finishing up this conversation. But it it just makes you think, okay, this is not a conversation two people would really be having. Yeah. It doesn't feel real. And if I'm looking at the front cover and Bendis is, uh, you know, ba basically... Um, this issue is really short. So I'll just break it down real quick. There's this new guy, you know, one of those Bendis creations, if you want to hold that page up, called Brutus, who attacks Kondok, um, and Black Adam. We were wondering how Bendis would bring Black Adam into the Justice League. Um, and it seems like they're just going to have a common enemy and, uh, you know. And work together from there. Exactly. Um, and... Basically, Hawk Girl's mace goes crazy, and they're basically just like... What is this guy? What's going on? We don't know. And the end of the issue, which Bendis, dude, what are you doing? And DC, you should have caught this. Um, if you guys remember from Infinite Frontier, um, literally, we had... Uh, in, in Infinite Frontier, Barry goes, I'm traveling... Barry Allen, the Flash, goes, I'm traveling the multiverse. I need, You're going to be the Flash on Earth and Central City and everything, and I'm going to be traveling the multiverse doing whatever, right? So Barry's gone. Gone as in he's going to be in the Justice Incarnate book with all of the other ones like Val Zod. Um, and Wally's going to be the Flash. He's, he's going to be like the main Flash again in the sense of he's going to be the one on Earth in Central City doing the things and with the Justice League. Now, but, here we go. Now, what we see is... Now, if, if I showed you this image of this character right here, right, I would say that's Wally. Red hair? He has red, red flowing hair. You know, he kind of has that Wally complex. Like, if you, if you look, right, actually, we have a perfect comparison. Um, Chad, hold up that page, ready, with uh, Wally. And look at Wally right there. Those two are clearly the same person. His, yeah. his head, Wally's head is noticeably longer it than is. Barry's. And he is wearing Barry's emblem. But I, I don't, I think they just kind of, like, it's Barry's costume, but that person right there is, yeah. the red hair. Clearly. It's clearly Wally, Wally West. West. However, they call him Barry. They call him Barry. And Barry's not supposed to be here. So. And Wally's supposed to be here. It's supposed to be Wally. It, I think, I think honestly, um, David Marquez, who's the artist, and I will say some great things about him in a minute. Um, David Marquez is like, okay, Bendis wants the Flash in here. Mm -hmm. So he draws Wally because he's, he's under, the, there's no flash on the just, on Bendis' first incarnation of the Justice League. There's no flash. Um, the flash is kind of just hanging out. Um, but I'm sorry, guys, I just got to do that real quick. Uh, my sincere apologies, but, um, Bendis probably wrote something along the lines of, you know, there's the Flash in the Justice League headquarters. Now, David Marquez took that as, okay, the Flash, he means Wally. Because Wally is the Flash of the Justice League and of Earth. Um, but he refers to him as Barry in that. So that was just kind of something that was a bit confusing, in my opinion. Um, the writing is really stilted. It doesn't really work. Um, and I think most egregiously, um, you know, <laughs> Bendis... Bendis created Naomi, this character, you know, in classic Bendis fashion. You know, she's she's youthful, she's fun, you know, whatever. And um, she's on the Justice League, even though she's basically a child. Like, not a child, but, you know, I, I, I look at her as, like, in her early 20s or her late teens. Yeah. Um, and she says something, and I quote, They unlocked my life. Uh, they unlocked my powers. Yeah, and, and my, my life, life has been crazy, crazy pants, pants ever since. Ever since. And then one of her friends says, I am streaming. streaming. 
and it, it, it just all feels very forced very fake and it doesn't sound like how people actually talk and that's a big problem throughout this book is this the dialogue it's very wooden it lacks character it's and also, nothing really happens throughout the entirety of this book. Yeah, it's really, it's like, all just filler. It it's... sets things up, and but Infinite Frontier set it, set this whole, basically the whole, oh, Black Adam and the Justice League are going to be coming together, and Hippolyta's going to join or whatever. Yeah. That issue already set up Black Adam and the Justice League interacting. This did not capitalize it on it in the slightest. At all. I would have thought that Black Adam and the Justice League would have joined together more coherently after this issue. But it really didn't go anywhere. No, yeah, it was... Uh, the dialogue wasn't great. The story wasn't great. Um, but what the, the standout, which you guys have probably seen from just me holding up the, uh, you know, the cover and the interiors, is uh, the art is absolutely fantastic. Oh, yeah, David Marquette is a fantastic job. It, it carries the book, honestly. Yeah. And the book is absolutely beautiful to look at. And... If I were to pick up this book again, it would just be for that fantastic art. Um, I, I uh, just personally, I love the way he draws Green Arrow, and I love the way he draws Hawk Girl. Uh, I like his Superman. And his, his Superman's great. Um, you get a big spread of Superman. There. Yeah, he's honestly every, he doesn't miss a beat on every character. Looks uh, incredible. So, so now the back issue, which was not quite as long as the Justice League story, it's the Justice League Dark. Written by Ram V and drawn by uh, Zermanico. Yeah, it's a one it's, name. It was a really... Ram, Ram V, he's be, just becoming one of my favorite modern writers. Like, he's... he's His dialogue is real. And it, and it is kind of a sharp juxtaposition between Bendis' wooden dialogue and Ram V's realistic dialogue. And, he, and he's doing... Like, Bendis is famous for his monologue. Yeah, of course, and of course. And in Ram V's book... You have several monologues, and they work better than Bendis's m couple of monologues. And Bendis is supposed to be famous for those monologues, so it just really doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but um, so Ram V's Justly Dark is probably the reason why I'm going to keep picking up this book, just because I was a huge fan of um, this little backstory. And if it continues in the Justice League story, that's the main reason why I'm going to keep picking up Justice League. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm probably not going to pick up the next issue. I just thought, you know, this week is really light. Why not just pick up, and I love this cover, personally, um, uh, petition to get David Marquez <laughs> to draw a Tim Drake or Jason Todd book. Um, but, yeah, Chad's probably going to pick it up so he can read the Justice League Dark story. I'm just gonna be like, hey, let me look at that and just look at David Marquez's art. Um, so yeah, that that's it. Now, um, is there anything else you wanna say about this issue? Um, one thing more about the Justice League Dark is yeah. that it, you know, Justice League Dark, they focus on magical characters and uh, I was never really into them, but Ran V writes them really well and so. he treats his audience, it's not, it, it, it's, it's not explaining magic because you can't explain magic, yeah. <laughs> but it, it explains the world and the interactions of, and the impact that magic has on this world. And it sets up some really interesting threads and it brings back legendary characters beyond just the DC universe, like mm -hmm. from legendary magical characters. So I'm looking forward to continuing reading the Justice League book just for the, the, back, the back of Justice League Dark. So. Um. But that's it for our pickup this week. We yeah, only just to those get to. two. Uh, I want to talk briefly about one little thing that we had going on at our comic book shop. And if you guys, if this happened to you at your comic book shop, please let us know. Um, so we go to our LCS and, um, uh, you know, we're, we're pretty much regulars there. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, we go and we pick up pretty much the same books. I mean, we try different stuff, obviously, but you know, he sees us monthly, um, or weekly, obviously, but he sees us go monthly to pick up the same books, follow these same series. And he's like, hey, uh, do you guys wanna do this thing called Pullbox on an online subscription where basically you just subscribe to the, so your pull list of, you know, they know to set these books aside for you every month is online and you can monitor and drop books like that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we did that uh, just so you guys know what we're uh, looking forward to in the future. So we weren't able to get Nightwing this time. But yes. Now that we're on pull box, we're, we should be able to keep that issue from occurring. Yes. Again. So guys, um, 
Uh, Chad didn't, but I, uh, you know, because I've been hyping up Nightwing for months now. I've literally been, months, been waiting for this issue. Um, I ordered issue 78. I ordered issue 79. And my subscription, as in I am, I am reserved one mm -hmm. issue, 100%, uh, every single month starts at issue 80. Uh, so from May until I cancel it, I will have uh, the Nightwing issue. Um, I also subscribed to Daredevil, as did Chad, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, and then we also subscribed to um, Chip Zdarsky's upcoming Justice League, which... Uh, last won't, Ride. Yeah, which won't release until May. However, we're really excited for that because we're really digging Bendis. So now our... Bendis. Digging <laughs> <laughs> Zdarsky. I mean, we talk about Daredevil, you can't not talk yeah, about Yeah, no, I know what you mean. And uh, I, I subscribed. It's a mini series, mm -hmm. which I don't really like to subscribe to because most likely you can find them. But uh, I was enjoying Proctor Valley Road so much mm -hmm. by Grant Morrison and Alex Child that I was like, hey, I'll just subscribe to make sure I have one for yeah. the rest. Speaking of Bendis, one more quick note. On my uh, last week's review where I talked about Superman, this story felt a lot like that Superman story where yeah. not a lot really happened and the back issue was better than the main <laughs> book. I just thought of that comparison, so I thought I'd bring that up. Um, but, yeah, we, we would recommend Iron Fist, and yeah. if you are, are reading it, comment what you like about it as well. And I would only recommend ah. Justice League Dark, or, uh, Justice. Justice League for the Justice League Dark backstory it's honestly it's a mediocre story with bad dialogue full of bendis pushing his own agenda with great art and that's what this book is um but doubling yeah. down on his own tapping patting himself on the uh, back yeah his, hey guys decision. i made the right decision um, i made this really cool character who's going to be on the justice league now it's basically just what bendis did at marvel essentially the people he, he he created and he wants to leave his mark on and he changed come to the forefront and everyone else you know, who cares? Off exactly. the side. So I hope they sort out that continuity issue and, you know, figure out which flash we're yeah, dealing with Yeah, because it was, it's clear, like, I, I'm, you know, and I'm, this is not just nitpicking at this point. In that panel, it is clearly Wally yeah, West. Yeah, it is. Like, it is Wally. Barry has blonde, Barry, Barry's hair looks like Chad's. Yeah. And, and it's, it's kind of, but my hair is shaped like Wally now that we're talking about yeah, it. Yeah, it's shaped like Wally, but I mean, <laughs> I'm talking, referring to the color. Yeah. Like, you know. <laughs> If he was like, if he had like this hair blonde in the book, it's clearly gonna be yeah, Barry. Barry but, it's, but it's 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 quite clearly yeah, and, orange. And even the like the colorist um, was not David Marquez. The colorist, um, um, it, the colors are great though. Uh, Tamara uh, Bond villain, she drew red hair like it's Wally as well. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know. If, maybe editorial just didn't want to read Justice League because they knew it was going to suck. They knew it's going to be Bendis, so they know it's going to ignore every single past thing that has ever been written in DC. So, you know, that's it. But, uh, yeah, you know, kind of, a, kind of a big day for us in the sense of, you know, we got to read Bendis' first foray into Justice League. Uh, guys it didn't like it. Didn't really like it, but check out issue uh, the first and second video on Iron Fist Heart of the Dragon, and look out on your inbox for the third video, which will be coming out tomorrow. Um, and if you guys have pull boxed and ha like, if you know any secret tricks, because Chad and I honestly we just got on there, and we really we we think we, we think got, we got it figured, figured out, out. <laughs> but honestly, I could receive all the books that I had ordered, and I wouldn't be surprised. But then I could receive none of them, and also be like, yeah, well, I probably that did this out. wrong. Yeah. So and if you yeah. did manage to get your hands on Nightwing seventy eight seventy eight, leave a comment and let us know what you thought. You can. Uh, yeah, leave a comment and uh, DM us because I want to read it and I don't want to buy it digitally. Just kidding. I'm not pirating comics. I'm just kidding. That's a joke. Please don't send me it. Um, but yeah, leave a comment because uh, I was really excited and it was a real bummer. I, I whispered to Chad. I was like, they don't have it. They don't have it. I'm going to die. Like, Should I ask him? Like, yeah, just ask him. <laughs> it was funny. The guy who came into the store right after we yeah. were on our way out, he's like, oh, do you have Nightwing? And he's like, oh, you and everyone else is looking like <laughs> yeah. So hopefully we will be able to get either a second printing, more orders of Nightwing. Yeah, because we did order 78. I don't know how Pullboxed works in regards to back issues. ordering back yeah. issues because, you know, there's a couple back issues that, uh, you know, we would like to order uh, just to complete some runs that we have. Um, and so if Nightwing 78, you know, goes to our local comic book shop and we get it normally, uh, 
we will definitely let you guys know, and uh, we will post a review on that book. If we can't, we'll get it digitally. Yeah, we'll get. It. We will read that issue one way or another. I'm sure they're gonna do a second printing. It's DC. You know, they're gonna. Whatever option makes them the most money, they're going to choose. So, you know. But that's it for this week's Wednesday Warriors. Uh, leave a comment. Let us know what you picked oh. up. Any issues that you think. And, and now we're on Pull Box. Let us know what you think we should be subscribing yes, to. Yes, please. If you have any subs like, uh, if you have any recommendations, it'll be super easy for us to look up the series. Probably order the next issue that comes out. Read it. And then maybe subscribe to the series. Let us know what series you're subscribed to. Uh, we're not going to do a best indie, best DC, best Marvel for the week because the best Marvel was Iron Fist. The best DC... Uh, was Nightwing, was, probably. Was Night, was, we haven't read it, but still probably Nightwing. Um, but from the ones we got is uh, Justice League wins by default. And I mean by default. Uh, and uh, no indie books. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, see you next week. Peace out.